going on, everyone? So that wasn't an ideal win, but I'll take it, right? Any win we can get, I will put in the W column. Uh, two straight victories against two legit playoff teams, uh, especially the Pelicans. The Pelicans are number three in field goal percentage uh, coming into tonight's game, and we did a great job of playing defense against them. Uh, again, defense was great, all that stuff. First half, we were fantastic, right? Uh, Russ was arguably the best player on the court in the first half. He was great. Uh, we were looking great. Uh, he's really seeming to embrace and and kind of, you know, take charge of that backup point guard role. And it's, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. Um, then we go on that crazy run. It was like, what, 17-2 run or something like that uh, to, to end the uh, first half. All is great. Get to that third quarter. We're looking great, right? We extend the lead to 16. You know, we're, we're in it. And then we just fall apart and crumble. Just completely like a house of cards come down. And it just was stressful. Uh, Russ did not have the second half the way that he had the first half. Uh, six turnovers is not good. Uh, not that he had them all in the in the first. In the, he had three at the end of the first half. And then he had another three in the second half. Although, um, to, to be fair, uh, like three of those turnovers weren't his fault. Like one of them, he had that pass just perfect right in the hands of Troy Brown. He dropped it. Another one uh, to winning Gabriel. And then there was another one that was like a little bounce pass that was fumbled away. Nonetheless, he's got to do a better job of taking care of the ball, right? Uh, you're going to have some like, you know, just knickknack turnovers, uh, which happen. But some of the careless ones, which he did have some careless ones, you, you got to do a better job of taking care of. Um, and his just production and aggressiveness and output in the second half wasn't as good. Um, he uh, he had a couple of just bad offensive plays in the in the second half that he didn't really have in the first half, which I don't mind. You know, I, like everybody's gonna have a bad moment here and there. Everyone's gonna have a bad offensive possession here and there. But he wasn't having that impact in the second half that he was in the first half, which would have justified. Okay, he took that. You know just early three, and then he had that, you know, where he should have let the offense catch up. Instead, he attacks the basket and just, you know, yeah, he drew a foul. They didn't call it, but he, he it was a play that he should have waited out on. Uh, LeBron, I know that there were reports that he was sick, I guess, that he had the flu or something like that, but he did not have a good game today. Um, and my issue is, my concern with that is that a lot of the stuff that he did poorly today was stuff he's been doing all year. You know, like, we are great when we're running a free-flowing offense, right? When the ball is moving and the ball and everyone's getting touches and we're making that extra pass, like, Russ had that nice extra pass, right? Like, when we're doing that, Troy Brown to uh, Walker, another nice, beautiful extra pass. When we're making those extra passes, we are great. Absolutely great. Uh, but when the ball sticks... And, you know, LeBron's holding the ball, letting the clock wind down, and then jacking up some fadeaway jump shot or, you know, some turnaround and or, you know, a, a three from distance. It's just, it's not a play we need. And LeBron is just, has so much higher of an IQ than that, so much better than that. And it's not even a decline thing because it's just a decision-making thing, right? Like, why not set it up and just move the ball, right? Like, if you want to take a possession off, just move the ball. You know, don't just jack up some three, right? And I just, I think in general, he's got to do a better job in his decision-making, especially late in games. He did that last year too. And a lot of it just kind of, and I, I granted I didn't have a YouTube channel then, but a lot of that I kind of just chucked up to like, look, it's a dismal season. It's terrible. LeBron's just trying to make something happen, right? But this year, that hasn't been the case. <laughs> Like, we've been in most of the games that we've played. You can make an argument that we should be, what, 5-2 and two right now? Or, you know, 4-2 and two or whatever? Like, but nonetheless, I, I imagine and I hope LeBron kind of turns that around. It, again, I would give him a complete pass if it was just tonight because he's sick. But it's something he's done all season long. Um, Anthony Davis isn't as aggressive as we need him to be. Part of that could just be the back issue. Um... But he's still been great out there. Uh, you know, the, the team as a whole, we're still playing incredible defense. We still can't shoot a lick, which sucks. We really need to kind of work out our uh, our, our three-point shooting. 
You know, we can't be shooting 20% and win games. I'm not saying we need to shoot 43% like we did against the Denver Nuggets, but we need to get somewhere in like the 30 range. You know, 32 to 34%. We can average out like that. I think we'll be good. Walker, absolute monster today. 28 points, and we needed all 28 of them. Problem is we can't rely on Walker to give us 28 points a game. He's averaging like 17 a game uh, after tonight's performance, something like that. And I think he can give us 15 a game. But we can't rely on him having to give you 20 plus a night in and night out, right? He's not supposed to be your your second or third best player. He's supposed to be your fourth or fifth best player that's putting up 15. And it's like, man, this is the guy that we need. Uh, Troy Brown, I really like what I've seen from Troy Brown. Troy Brown and, and Walker... Those are two guys I hope the Lakers keep around for a long haul. Those are two guys that you could have as your role players that are key contributors on a championship team. Those guys are really good for the Lakers right now. Um, Patrick Beverly, look, I know he made a big play towards the end of the game, but you could also make an argument he made a play that almost cost us the game on several occasions. He's been unplayable. He's going to the basket looking for a foul rather than finishing, right? And that was one of the big things, right? He gets the big offensive rebound, looks great, and then follows that up by like a wide open layup that instead of taking, he thinks the defender is going to come and crash into him. So he falls back and just throws up a little floater and the defender never comes to close out and he would have had a wide open layup. But he went to the basket expecting to get a foul rather than finishing at the rim. They teach you that in elementary school. You know, get to the rim with a purpose and finish and work through the contact. If the contact comes, you put it on the ref to make the decision, right? And instead, he decided to just try to float it up. They get the rebound, they go down, they score, and now we're in trouble, right? And it took Matt Ryan hitting some, you know, mind-blowing shot and the Pelicans missing two free throws. We didn't win that game. The Pelicans lost that game, right? It took some miracles. All that, who was it, Murphy that had to just, he only had to make one free throw and the game was over. He missed both. It was that whole Damian Lillard, like, have you ever been in this position before? I love that. I hope somebody said that to him. But nonetheless, it was one of those things where it's like, you know, we, we got to do a better job closing games out. We got to do a better job in the third quarter. I don't know what it is. We close out halves like it's game seven of an NBA finals. And, you know, we're trying to close out a game. But we open the second half and we're just a dismal. We're terrible. And it's just, it's, I don't know if it's locker room adjustments. I don't know if it's guys like needing to stay hot or what. I don't know. Instead of going to the locker room and talking, have them go run some laps or something. I don't know. Like, it's just, or stay out on the court and shoot some jump shots, you know, or come out early and get some shots up or something. Uh, we need to do a better job of closing out third quarters and third quarters in general and, you know, closing out games. Um, you know, we got to do a better job in our shot selection. Uh, LeBron included everybody. Uh, now, I, 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 I really think this Lakers team needs, like, a score. I really like what we're seeing with Russ coming off the bench and him really embracing that role. And he's having a real impact for us, right? He has been great for us. Um, but we need we need scoring. Like, obviously we need shooting. But I think beyond just shooting, we need a guy that can shoot but can also go get a bucket. Because as great as Walker is, he's not a fluid scorer. You know, he's not a guy, like, he has to work for his bucket. He's just so young, athletic, and crafty that he's able to get a bucket uh, as opposed to, like, if we could get somebody that can, you know, be a scorer, like a Terry Rozier or something like that. Um, I think that that would be hugely beneficial. But I'm not in a rush to trade Russell Westbrook. Like, if they traded Russ for the right package, I wouldn't be upset. But I'm willing to give Russ a shot off the bench, especially he's embracing it. Dude is playing great defensively. Um, You know, I, I just, I'm willing to give him a shot off the bench and maybe look to move, make other deals. Cause Patrick Beverly, I think, I think you, you take Patrick Beverly and you take Kendrick Nunn, you package them together and you go ship them off and you go get like a scorer or a couple three guys. Uh, like you can literally do the Spurs trade without Russell Westbrook with just Patrick Beverly and Kendrick Nunn. 
So if you're the Lakers, like I think that that's something you look at. Um, just because Patrick Beverly is just, we're better with him off the court. We're better defensively and just overall. He's a negative uh, minus on the overall team uh, when he's in the game. Yes, he's great. He's gritty. He's a locker room guy. He's all those things. I love Patrick Beverly. I was one of the few people that was stoked to get Patrick Beverly. But he just hasn't been a factor. And right now, we're not good enough to just have a locker room guy. We need, need guys that can come in, contribute, play big minutes, and be big productively, right? Like Patrick Beverly is costing us more than he's helping us. Uh, he did have, again, a big play, and I credit him for that. But we need more. And unfortunately, we don't have any other assets that we can trade outside of Patrick Beverly and Russell Westbrook. But that's got to be like a big blockbuster deal. Patrick Beverly, you could trade Patrick Beverly for like, you know, uh, like you can literally trade Patrick Beverly and Kendrick Nunn for Yaka Portal and Josh Richardson. And I think that, that would make a huge impact on this team, especially with Russ coming off the bench as six man. But again, regardless, a win is a win. I will take the win. I am very thankful for the win, whatever it takes. Um, but we got to do a better job. Got to do a better job going forward. Bright side is we play the Utah Jazz twice, play the Cavs, which is going to be tough. But if we beat all three of those, we could go, I think it's like, what, the November 9th, we play the, the Clippers. We could be 5-5, five and five, you know, and that could be a huge game for us. Um, but anyway, as always, this is a discussion, so I want to hear from you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Good, bad, ugly, somewhere between. However you feel, I'd love to hear it. Let me know.